without further ado, I'd like to introduce Sean to me, Haas, ILM animator and animation mentor. Mentor, We're so excited to have <laughs> you today. How are things on uh, in your neck of the woods? So far, so good. Um, there has been a slight change. I'll just I'll first say hi. Again, my, uh, my name is JD. Jean-Denis, technically the name. Everybody calls me JD, it's totally fine, especially in writing, JD. Uh, and I am uh, currently in San Francisco, up north, like an hour north from San Francisco. Questions are coming in. Look at that. Down with hot. <laughs> so good. All right. It's already chaos. Chaos. Now, I'm going to look at those questions. Uh, I can't answer anything about chickens. <laughs> I don't know what that chicken. All depends on the want and the action and the acting choices and all that good stuff. It's strange not having cameras. I'm so used to mentor Q&A and having faces and interact and seeing if they're, if they're falling asleep or not. And here it's just, I'm talking to the void. It's interesting, but I'm going to look at the chat, all of this, those uh, chat texts. All right. So today, what's your all time favorite animation movie? Look at that. <laughs> We're starting off strong. Before I go into the, uh, the setup thing that is part one, um, that is kind of the, uh, the physical setup, the, the mental setup and kind of how to adjust, um, in terms of working from home. That's kind of the main topic here. Um, take it easy with the questions, but I'm going to answer all of them. It's a lie. I will, I'll try. All-time favorite animation movie? That's a good question. That's a hard one. Uh, can't answer that. I love Toy Story movies. Toy Story 2 is great. Uh, Monsters Inc. is great. I really like The Incredibles. I think Incredibles and How to Train a Dragon, I think they're uh, at the top. They're very, uh, very, very top there. Uh, Iron Giant is really good, though. Most recent animated movie you've seen, Onward, uh, it was the last one, which I liked a lot. Um, especially the ending was really good. So anyway, I'm going to go through those things since you have questions so I can get to your questions for sure. Uh, first of all, if you are affected by the coronavirus situation that is affecting a ton of people, so I'm assuming some of you will have um, uh, you know, a certain switch in terms of maybe you worked at home, and now you're working, uh, worked at a company or somewhere outside, and now you have to work at home. So I want to break this up into two things where it's kind of the physical setup and a kind of a mental setup, if you will. So a very obvious thing, but everything's going to be somewhat obvious there to some degree, is that if you are stuck at home, I highly recommend to really look at a good monitor. Now, some things are expensive, some things are cheap. You have to kind of look at your own situation and your um, financial situation as well. But I switch to a widescreen monitor because at work we have two. So I can, I can, I usually have one here and then I switch over to check from emails or a graph editor stuff or things I don't quite check uh, too often. And it's okay and I like it, but I prefer my current setup, which is this, this monitor here. Hold on, let me show you. Ooh, careful. Look at that. That is what I'm seeing right now. And that is the monitor with a long cable. So with that one, I like having everything in place so that I don't have to do a lot of left, right like this because of my neck. So for me, it's all about ergonomics, which I'll get to it later. But I want to have everything in the middle to some degree and then email on the windows left and uh, to, to the side. But just definitely have a monitor with, and most of them are really good nowadays, but a good refresh rate, just anything that doesn't strain your eyes. And I think that's the main thing that I notice when I stopped working physically in the city, uh, and then I work at ILM. So I came here, we can still do ILM work here, but I noticed that I actually work more. That doesn't mean that I work less at work. It means that at work I am working and then you take a break or you go to dailies, you have meetings, who get lunch. I feel like I am stepping away from the machine more, which gives me more physical breaks and from eyes and everything. Now that I'm home, I feel like I am looking at my monitor all the time. I get there at nine and I'm done at seven, an hour lunch break, and my eyes are sometimes on fire. So everybody has a phone. You usually put in a, uh, what's it called? A timer. Uh, and I put in a timer an hour, 10 minutes or so. And then after every hour, I just get up. And then you have kind of you know, warnings on the watch um, to kind of get up. So for me, a good monitor, obviously a powerful computer, whatever you need to do for your work is super important. But the monitor is for me, this is the, the first thing. Then with something you have to work with is I use a pen, as you can see. And I use a marble mouse at work. I'm a lefty though. 
uh, and I don't use a, a mouse, a regular mouse. I have one here that I can pull up. But if I do, for animators in here, if I do polish and I kind of, uh, like I start squeezing the mouse really hard because I want to move every single pixel, my hands hurt, uh, especially my, my fingers here at the joint. So I switched to this a long time ago in a marble mouse uh, a long time ago as well. So for me, I have that for sure. So I can switch around and it's a bit more natural for my wrist. Um, I have this kind of keyboard, kind of wireless thing, also light up. So it's at night. I'm not going to say in the dark, so it lights up. But I can always see it. But you always need lights. That's the other thing. In my setup, I have the blinds, but I have lights here. Hold on, let's get all fancy here. I have a remote that turns on the lights here and I can turn off my background lights. I'm so lazy. <laughs> uh, so I can all the, turn all this stuff on just because I don't want it to be too dark again because of eye strain. I just turned 43 years old. I'm old. And uh, I need to make sure that I'm not falling apart. Um, what I also have, and this is, there are some expensive versions. There are some cheaper versions at IKEA. What is it? A desk. And what I have is... All the way back. So I can adjust this to a specific height that I have uh, stored for standing or sitting. And that's the same thing at work. Um, so yeah, let me just check here. Are we able to hear? I am. Just checking here. Someone says not seeing anything. All right. How wide is your monitor? That's a good question. It's a 5,051 like something by 14 something something. Someone goes, that's not very accurate. 5120 by 2160, 37 inch. Uh, I think that's the, that's the monitor here. Is it hard working at home? Yes and no. It's hard because it's work um, and it's hard with distractions. And at the same time, no, because I get to see my kids more that I'm home. So even though they might come in, especially my little one, yeah. It's fun, but it's a distraction. But at the same time, you know, I get to hug and get to kiss him. And like, you know, I, I'm just, I like being home in general to be with my family. So that I think is a cool, um, an add on to like a positive side to this horrible situation that everybody is in. So I like being around my family more, just to answer that question there. Um, all right, just quick to go back to the monitor, I want to share my screen and I want to show you this. And I have no idea if this works. It should work. Uh, it's f.lux. If you're on a PC, I highly recommend you get this. It adjusts your uh, temperature, color temperature of your monitor, depending on your, you know, daytime, morning, evenings, and everything. Because I used to have those gunner glasses, they're those yellow tinted glasses because of the, the screen glare. Um, and it's kind of always having glasses on, it's kind of a pain. I do have my glasses already. These are my, my regular glasses that I hang here on the side. Um, but I found that the F-Lux is just, I've got so used to it. And I tried it yesterday without it. And it's, just, it's so blue at night. And it just really, really irritates my eyes. Um, so if you have a PC, I highly recommend you do that. And since I have this open, I'm going to go back here and show you this. This is what I found today. This is the NVIDIA RTX voice. Now you might go, How, what, what does that mean? So if you go on my Twitter, so twitter.com, that's my Twitter. I just posted a test this morning. This is the thing that if you have RTX graphics cards, the AI combination, blah, 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 it reduces the background noise to a crazy degree. You can have a fan in here. You can see I retweeted a YouTube clip where someone tested this leaf blower or like crazy stuff. And you can, you can have noisy kits in the background and it silences everything except your voice. So terms of work, if you are in dailies or you have a meeting or uh, I don't know, if you have a QA, and a if you're a mentor and you have a Q&A or anything you want to record, uh, I have tried this this morning and it's absolutely fantastic. If you have an RTX graphics card, um, I highly recommend that you try this out. It's very, very cool. Um, right. Lights again. I also have this one just in case. There's another remote here. This is usually the one when I do my YouTube recording. But as you can see, I am fully packed when it comes to lights. Um, just because, again, my eyes uh, and the eye strain and everything else. Now, I'm going to take my camera again. It's going to be super weird. Bear with me. Hold on. Everybody hold on to your, to your butts here. Ah! I also have 
besides toys, if anybody's into Tintin, Pixar, all of this. Stream Deck, that will be a YouTube clip one of these days. I got to switch it over. And I'm going to show you this here. So this is what I have. Whee! This thing here. So I have my monitor on here. And this is a, uh, what's it called? A sound bar. So for music. And it came with this. So I can put my remotes in here, which is pretty cool. And then in those grooves here, let me see here. I can put my phone, right? It's very cool. Also here to charge just in case, but I usually do that. So I'm a big fan of a absolutely like distraction free, easy setup where I can just sit down and get ready. Even my headphones, there's a hook on the table where I just put them down and, and hook it up. And then my chair has these thingies that go up um, to put it under the table. It's very Swiss. I'm Swiss, by the way. So uh, <laughs> it's very clean, Swissy uh, setup. But again, the reason why I'm doing all this is, is that I want my physical setup to be easy to access, clean as much as possible. The right side is a bit messier. Um, so that I can just sit down and I don't have to worry about recabling things. Everything is very, very fast. Even my mic has this, wah, I can turn this around here. Burp, burp, burp. So it's all super easy, just easy accessibility and nothing where, where I need to be in an uncomfortable position. The chair is not super expensive. It's not the, <laughs> the Herman Miller that we uh, have at work because we're spoiled, uh, but it's still fairly, fairly comfortable and with a mesh. Why a mesh? Because I sweat really easily. So if you're in the summer and it's, and it's hot in here, because it gets really hot in here, um, and you sit down and I sit in a, a different chair, my back gets really sweaty and it's gross and it's just uncomfortable. So the chair goes up and down. I have adjustments here. I can lean it back. So a physical setup um, is very, very important to me. Then let me check some questions. We go back and forth within questions and uh, me rambling. Does being enrolled in animation mentor count as being enrolled in school as far as internships, apprenticeships for school? Uh, that's a school question that I'm going to let AM answer. Do you think your animation is getting less attention than 2D animation now? No, I don't think so. But I see that 2D animation is getting more attention, which is great. But with movies like um, I don't know, Connected that's going to come out or Spider-Verse or The Wilburrows, I mispronounced it, came out today on Netflix. Um, just the style is evolving where it's kind of a, not it's a mixed media, but it kind of, the 3D doesn't look as 3D anymore but it doesn't go full 2D like Klaus. Klaus was awesome, by the way. If you haven't seen this, watch it. It's great. Um, so I don't think so. I don't think it's being either replaced. I think 2D is coming back and a 3D is getting a bit more of a 2D look. And I think they can all coexist. The only thing I wish was that people would watch stop motion more. Stop motion movies need to make money. The stop motion movies are great. That's, to me, the ultimate craft. Not knocking other disciplines and other types of animation. But holy moly, stop motion blows me away. Any type of Leica movie, the, the acting choices, the smoothness of it, it's just all, the production design, it's so well done, all by hand. It's insanity. And it's whenever, uh, or Kubo, yes, also great. And when those movies come out, they just don't make those same numbers as the, you know, the, the 3D blockbusters. So I wish people would love it as much as I do and, and so that they can do more. But it's so cool, so cool. All right, let's see. Is Maya dying? No. I don't know. I don't think, I hope not. I mean, I'm, that's all I know. <laughs> I hope it's not dying. That's what uh, I want to keep using. We'll be replaced by Houdini. I'm sorry, Houdini, good for animation. Blender's um, supposed to be good for animation uh, in some aspects. I mean, every software package is going to have a uh, you know, pro and con list. But unless you heard a rumor that Maya's dying, uh, I, I don't know about that. Where did you get the remote for the lights? That's a good question. Probably Amazon, <laughs> as we are all buying things from Amazon. I always try to buy things locally. I live in Petaluma, and I go to the stores. There's usually nothing. And then I go into a bigger store, San Rosa, and then, you know, bigger things. And then you could check out Target. And at the end, it's just they don't have exactly what I need because I wanted multiple ones. Because as you can see, or will see, there are multiple ones, right? So I can select all kinds of things here. And actually, I have another one for my, for my home uh, theater setup to to turn on the off the lights and turn the projector on everything so i like things you know quickly remotely as you can see uh and i've only found that on amazon so 
Uh, yeah, I try to support other things, but every now and then just Amazon has it. Um, what is your daily routine? How many hours do you work a day? That's a great question. I can segue into my other part, but we have still some time. Don't want to waste time here. The daily routine. I wake up <laughs> dazed and confused, remembering that I'm old and then my knees hurt. <laughs> That's literally the steps. Then I roll off the bed. Uh, it's basically I get up um, and then it depends on how uh, so uh, how awake I am. Technically, my routine is I get up a quarter to five, and then I go downstairs, have a shake, like a vitamin shake, protein shake, kind of you know minerals, all kind of stuff in there, um, and then I check mails, answer questions everywhere on social just to get rid of that, not rid of that, but you know to be done with it because people are waiting for an answer. Then usually from I don't know five to seven. Uh, five to six or something like that. I do critiques. So I got mentor critiques. I have my workshops and I do uh, also uh, Academy of Art stuff. So uh, lots of critiques that are waiting. And I try to do this all in the morning um, so that people have the answers right away. Doesn't always work. My students will probably go, yeah, huh? we get it Tuesday midnight. It really depends. Sometimes, you know, we're busy. There's overtime at work or there's not overtime. There's family stuff. So I try to do it like that. It doesn't always work. But that's kind of routine in the morning, getting up, getting things done. Uh, then seven to eight, just kind of cleaning up. You know, my kid wakes up usually around seven. So it's kind of breakfast time, family time, uh, taking a shower, which is back into my routine, but that's for later. Uh, just getting ready. And then at nine, I log in to work. And then I work till 12. Sometimes I work through and then finish at six. But a lot of times now I do 12 to one a break or 12 to one thirty, And then I work till seven or 7.30 and then continue on. Um, and that's kind of that. And within that workday, um, again, timer for breaks, work on shots, dailies, and kinds of meetings, um, or just conversations between coworkers, either, uh, professionally because of rig problems or animation tests or stuff like that, or just chit chat with coworkers. Um, and that's pretty much it. And that's Monday to Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday, I usually don't touch anything computer related. Um, unless it's a critique that's waiting. I do want to get to that so that people don't really wait. Um, but I am fairly strict Saturday, Sunday with no screen time, except on the phone. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm always somewhere on Twitter. Um, but I try to not do any type of work. So again, to rest my eyes, but also have a work-life balance. So I love my work. I'm very spoiled. I'm very fortunate and privileged in terms of what I do and how long I've been at the company and the type of projects. At the same time, when work time is over, I'm out. <laughs> Because it's, I want that break. I want that mental break. That's it for me. And I want to spend time with my family. And it needs to be a really good, a good balance for me where I can play video games with him. Or I, as you see here, it's a Nintendo 64 that I bought before the, the pandemic. I can't even do like finger acting towards a camera. Like I point, oh. So there, got GoldenEye and Wave Ray 64. Oh, if you know this, it's awesome. Sometimes I just play this to get the background uh, noise going. Wave Race, the training grounds, the music and the, and the voices. If anybody out there likes this, oh, it's so good, so good. Um, anyway, so that's that. And then Sunday evening, sometimes I get back to the critiques. Um, but usually it's taken up with either Westworld <laughs> or used to be Game of Thrones. Like a lot of shows happen on Sunday. So then that's, um, that kind of happens. Uh, yes, let me just check. Are Max and uh, Wacom, 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 Cintiq worth investment for animation? That's a good question. I can't tell you because I don't have a Mac. I used, did I? No, I think I always had a PC. I've seen like a 16 or so, always PC. But I have an iPad and I have a phone and they're great. Um, just Macs have always been too expensive for me. So I always stuck to PCs. Um, a Cintiq really depends what kind of work you do. I know some people that use them and they're great. Um, I'm just sticking to my tablet in terms of my, you know, as you saw, the old, the small tablet thing, you know, the screen tablet, uh, but why not? What was the website that you used for sound reduction? That is the NVIDIA RTX voice. Let me grab this and paste it in there. And then let me show you this here. This is when people go, really? We are watching JD type. This is not why we're here for. Uh, my Twitter account. <laughs> Follow me, not for vanity reasons, but I tell all my students, follow me just because I retweet a ton of stuff about, uh, I don't know, all kinds of animation, obviously, but it's like movies, animation, game animation, 
um, any type of job postings, um, any type of awesome reels, inspirational stuff, things that help you with the setup. Every now and then my personal rants or things, but I try to keep it on the, on the smaller side. So uh, feel free to follow me there. And it will just go into my, my likes, which I treat as bookmarks. So I'm not just randomly liking things or things. Oh, I like this so much. The things that I like are always animation related and, and kind of like a bookmark side. So feel free to, to go there. Uh, let's see. What's the name of the chair that you have at ILM? That was a Herman Miller. It's like the FedEx logo with that arrow. Once you see a Herman Miller chair, you can't unsee it. It's in every movie. <laughs> Uh, there's some partnership or something going on, but they're extremely comfortable. I actually bought one a long time ago and I saved that money. It's like 750 bucks. They're usually like a thousand bucks. They're insane. But I thought, you know what? They're so great at, at work. I want one at home. But then we moved here. Then I sold it because I'm an idiot. Uh, I should have kept it. Uh, they're very pricey. But holy moly, if you sit, if your butt is in this for nine hours or longer, you will notice. And they're extremely, extremely comfortable. I'm sure there are other ones out there. People can comment and put things there. I use this. How dare you say Herman Miller? Um, I just really like those because I'm used to that. I'm sure there are other ones that are out there that are great too. Um, but it's really what you get for the price. You know, like I have one that I bought 50 bucks. It's the worst. <laughs> it broke. I'm also old and heavy. Maybe I, I broke it. I don't know. But this one, I don't know how much this one was. Like 120, 179. I don't know. It's really comfy. It's, it's definitely better than what I had before. Uh, let's see. What pen and drawing tablet did you have next to your keyboard? That is the, the whatever the cheapest, the cheapest, like the, the lowest uh, Wacom, Wacom thing it is. These are the same, just a newer model. I feel like those little ones, they are replacing them. It feels like every five minutes. Whenever I go on their website, like what is the cheapest one for $79? It's always a new one. I don't know. So uh, that's that. Um, what do you think of Miku Miku Dance? What is that? I think I know Red versus Blue, but the other ones, I don't know. That shows how old I am. So I'll tell you, uh, I don't know. But you can, you can uh, go on Twitter, tweet, DM me, and let me know. Show me uh, some, some examples, and maybe, maybe I know it. I don't know. Some students have let us know that summer internships are not going to happen, which sucks. Any tips on how to bounce back from this? That is uh, kind of part two, kind of. Um, it is a very, very tough one, actually. And uh, what I would recommend, it's got suddenly very blurry, a blurry face. Um, just, just really increase your social media presence. That sounds really weird, but I mean, post your stuff online where you go on LinkedIn. Uh, even Instagram or Twitter, just put your reel out there, work on it, show some breakdowns, maybe some progression reels, um, just work and put that out there so that you are seen. Because you can't go to CTN, you can't go to GDC, there's no internship. Like, How will people see how awesome you are? So my tip would be just go out there, post your work, someone will see it, someone will like it, someone will share it, send it to the supervisors, and they'll go, hey, this is a great person, put that on the list. Once we hire again, that person will be there uh, and get hired. No promises, but that's what I would do. And I, uh, I check LinkedIn a lot. There's so many talented people out there. It's very intimidating. It's very humbling to go through my feed on, the, on LinkedIn. It's pretty bananas. So uh, yeah, I would do that for sure. We'll get back to that. Let me go back to my thing here. Now, this... It's very important to me. This is water. I drink a ton of water. Why? Because if you know me, uh, it makes me go pee, clearly, uh, because you drink a lot of water, which forces me to take breaks. This back there is a bathroom, by the way, so it's not, it's not that far away. But I try to be as healthy as possible. I say this, and I eat a ton of chocolate. I love junk food, all that stuff, but I'm trying to be obviously more uh, uh, healthy the older I get. But I drink a ton of water, so try to stay hydrated and eat healthy during the day so that your energy levels stay the same. Like at lunch, if I have a pizza at lunch or some pasta or something, by four o'clock, I pass out and it's not good for work. So I try to have my energy level up as high as possible in terms of like functioning, functioning levels. So I try to just drink water, be healthy. Uh, I started exercising again. So that's kind of the new change uh, for being home. Um, speaking of rest of, of taking breaks, what happens too is that when I'm at work, I look at the monitor and then I, like I said, go to dailies, meetings, go grab lunch, 
like whatever I do, and my eyes will focus on something else that's further away. You have to think of your eyes as muscles. They focus on something close and something further away. Now that I'm home, it's just always this. It's always this distance and this room, and then that's it. So I try to take breaks, open up the windows. If I can take a walk at lunch, I haven't had time yet, but I'll, that's my plan because I have a dog, uh, a beagle, just in case, uh, for beagle like uh, lovers out there. So I want to take the dog out for, for walks and just a, again, mental break, different kind of break, uh, break, fresh air, but also have your eyes focused on something else. I'd be very, very careful in terms of um, straining your eyes too much. Um, the other thing too is that because you are, or I am in this room, constantly working, stuff is going on. It's like at work, again, you are at your desk and even though you have your coworkers, you're still kind of working by yourself, depending on your setup, you have people next to you or not. But there's always kind of a moment where, especially if everybody's concentrated, you're alone, kind of. You mean like you're just concentrated and that's your thing. Me at home, I'm here. Uh, sometimes people come in, depends on what I'm working on, because of security reasons, we'll be closed. I have a light outside, by the way, that turns on red to show that I'm busy, you can't come in. But there's just a lot of stuff going on. So something else on my list here is quiet time. And I think that for me, like, I like that as well, where uh, that's why, for instance, at five in the morning, it's quiet. I don't get any texts, no emails, um, except from coworkers who just had a baby. Then I get texts at five in the morning from them. They're awake. Uh, but it's usually very quiet. And that's kind of just like, I wouldn't say me time, but you mean like it's just, it's just kind of no distractions. It's quiet. You do your thing. You just relax, read a book. Just find just ways to structure your day into this is work, family time, quiet time, recharging time. Um, and it doesn't have to be extremely structured, but I would try to find something where you do have that for yourself. You can spend time with other people, spend time at work, but also spend time for yourself. Be it go for a run, uh, play some sports, go exercise, whatever that is. Um, the other thing, and this is tricky, but this is tricky in terms of your setup. So I don't know any of you, uh, some of you in the chat, but I don't know how your home setup is. Me, I'm extremely lucky that this used to be the bedroom. Hello. And... <laughs> And uh, we moved everything out a long time ago. And this is now the family room. So if I take my camera again, this door, if I open this door, this used to be a closet for, for clothing. Uh, there is a projector right there. Hold on, the way I'm, my finger acting again, right there hidden behind the door, which then when it turns on, projects onto this wall. I take those posters down and, oh, that's it. So this room that used to be the bedroom is now the family entertainment room. You know what I mean? Video games everywhere, couch, watch movies, TV shows. Um, you know, it's just, I'm very lucky to have that set up, but it's also, I'm very sheltered, meaning that if I work, it needs to be private. We have dailies, red light goes on. No one comes in here. That is not possible for a lot of people because they have only one smaller room, a room that needs to be shared. Um, so if you can try to, I would recommend, it's all very subjective and personal, but I would try to put your work set up in a very separate space. If you can in a separate room or just in a corner, I heard that people put like a blanket over their desk at the end, just so it's out of their way. They don't look at it. It's a clear distinction between my office and the living space. Again, I'm lucky with what I have. Um, but if you can do that in terms of a separate room and all that, I think that will be also just a mental break. It will help with that to know uh, I'm going to work and that's it. Which, you know, I should backtrack. The first thing you, you should do, and that's in my routine, I get up and I take a shower. <laughs> Please take showers. Uh, I get dressed. I wear, this is going to be super weird. Oh, I'm so old. Pants, jeans. I'm not in my sweats. Every now and then I get up and I like, last week, I think, what is today? Friday. I think this week as well. There's usually one day where I stay in my jammies and I just work because I don't have a cune or anything. I'm just home and no one sees me. I admit sometimes I stay in my jammies and, and then go back to bed in my jammies. It's gross, but sometimes I'm extremely lazy. But usually, uh, shower, shave, here, not clearly not here. Uh, and I just want that, that office routine of getting ready, breakfast, whatever you do, get dressed, work, then you're done. Pants fly off, hello, and jammy pants go back on or some sweats, something comfortable. And then I'm back to as if I just uh, came home from work. Um, so yeah, I want to I wanna do that. Let me check the time. Time is flying. Importance of routine. All right, so the other thing that I do, 
is I have these on a lot, but also the sound bar, uh, as you saw when I brought it down, um, for music. And again, this is very subjective, depending on how your workflow is, but I like to listen to music and especially movies. That sounds really weird, but I listen to movies a lot where it's movies that I know already. Jurassic Park, The Matrix, Star Wars, um, whatever it is. Yesterday I listened to Jurassic Park, the first one actually, and either it's through the soundbar on stuff that I have on my computer, or this is so nerdy and so spoiled, but I also have an Alexa back there. And then I can just, because it's connected to my whole library with, with Apple movies as well. So I can say, hey, Alexa, play Jurassic Park. Ha, I turn it off. Uh, and then it will say, which one? And then it say, blah, blah, blah. And then I have music or, or movies. And I like that. Like sometimes it sets me in a certain mood for animation. Do I need to be sad or happy or energetic? And it's kind of a, a I don't know, it just helps me animate. And sometimes also drone out if they're, if they're kids playing or anything going on downstairs to just make this my bubble in my workspace. And maybe you don't, maybe you need silence. And then you got these guys, you got noise canceling headphones that you can put on. So, but that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's kind of my setup. Let me get back to questions. So I'm fairly done. There's other stuff, but I'm, I'm going to fold that into, uh, into the questions. Could you show your mouse again? I don't use a mouse, but the one that I have here is one from MSI. They gave me that one because they also gave me a monitor. Shout out to MSI, uh, which I'm going to do a presentation tomorrow just in case. Ooh, I'm, 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 I'm crossing streams here. Um, but they're really, really good. Uh, again, I don't use a mouse just because it hurts my fingers. Let's see. What else do we have? How do you manage your time with workshops, YouTube contents, ILM, and of course, family? It's just impressive. Would you like to know? I uh, would like to know how you manage the limited time you have. Um, it's kind of what I said before, where I just try to do everything in the morning, get up early, get everything done um, in terms of critiques and work that people are waiting for and paying for. And then I do work and then family will be, you know, evenings if I have time uh, for sure weekends, but usually weekend, I mean, evenings, you know, you have dinner, some play time, usually play some games or read to my, to my little one uh, in bed and, and then that's that. In terms of YouTube, sometimes it's also in the morning. And what I try to do is I shoot things like Monday, Tuesday evening, or maybe Sunday night just, or something in the morning. And I shoot ahead. So I got my notes. I do my whatever recording to my camera, which here I'll show you my setup. This is the, the, uh, the mic. And then you can see the camera there piped in into all of this. So this is, again, messy in terms of cables, but this is my YouTube setup and this is my work setup. Um, and I shoot that in advance. So I got my notes and I shoot everything. And then all I need to do is obviously shower and get ready because I want to look like this and not like I roll out of bed. But once everything is shot, then the next day when I roll out of bed, I can just edit. I haven't taken a shower yet until whatever, 8.30. And I just edit and put things together. So I try to be always kind of a week or two or three ahead. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. And currently I'm not. <laughs> so I do it all either the same day or um, the night before, which is not good because then it's, kind of, it's just a bit stressful. Um, but also, sometimes I just do nothing. So this week I've been fairly busy. And sometimes I'm so busy that I just don't upload anything. The only thing you will see on my YouTube channel are my critiques because I have them. I have a 10-year-old backlog of critiques that they're ready. All I need to do is edit it together and upload. So I always have something to upload. But if I'm too busy, it's my channel. It's my schedule. I can just stop. Like I'm not, I'm not going to force myself to stay there and, and do those things because people demand it. Just if I'm tired and I don't have time, I'm just not going to do anything. That being said, I love, subjectively, my Thursday acting analysis clips, even though they get the lowest views. <laughs> I love them because I have noticed that I learn a ton by forcing myself to do that. And maybe that's something in your routine that you can do as you're stuck at home. Now, what could you do that could help you in your education or whatever uh, helps moving forward in your, in your animation journey and studies? Is that for me, I force myself to watch something uh, once a week, be a TV show or a movie, probably both once a week. And then I write stuff down that I like. I analyze it, I make the movie, put it on YouTube, but I've noticed that I'm better and faster, or better, quote unquote, definitely faster at identifying things that I like, and it, ha it has helped me at work, and just generally teaching has helped me a ton, but I've noticed doing this whole YouTube thing has helped me be better. Uh, I have to say, that's, that's a great um, kind of a side effect. So 
even if no one would watch anything that I post, I would still take notes. I obviously wouldn't post it, right? But I would take notes because it just helps me in terms of ideas and, and springboard for more ideas. Uh, it helps me at work. I'm just doing tests for something I can talk about, but I put those ideas in there as well. Um, and there's something more about that that we'll talk in part two, how to stay motivated, but if you have a sneak peek about that. Uh, let's see. What's your opinion on CGI? CGI, I love CGI. CGI shorts that are made to look like stop motion. Uh, that's fine with me. I love stop motion. So anything that looks like stop motion, I love. <laughs> um, like I can't do stop motion, but if I can animate in CG and then make it look like stop motion, that would be awesome. I would love to be able to render things to look really cool. Uh, that's my goal. Once mentor ends, hello students, once I'm, I'm done, I will do uh, my own shots at home. I really want to do my own cartoony shots at home again during the summer. And I really want to learn how to light things. I just make it look really cool and have a specific look to it. Kitty is like, you know, stop motion not just in movement, but kind of in terms of the textures. But anyway, that's my, that's my thing. How do you deal with Maya crashing in the middle of your work? <laughs> Ideal. That's a great question. I deal with drowning my sorrows in water. So instead of yelling at a drink a ton of water, so I, rrr, 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 so I don't get fired from yelling. Uh, you take walks, you take your favorite pillow, um, that type of stuff. Now, I save a lot. Every time there's a very significant update, and I'm not talking to her like, oh, my blocking is done. It's like, this arm is done. The eyebrows are done. Something in this mouth shape is done. Or oh, I did some crazy constraint thing. Save, increment save. I constantly save. That being said, Maya, when it crashes, a lot of times have a, has a recovery uh, file in our user temp directory. So that helps. But um, so yes, so I deal with shouting internally, but I save a ton. Um, so yeah. How do you do with overtime? Is it normally okay to refuse? Oh, wait, we're back. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm just jumping in. You're doing a great job of Q&A, but I just wanted to see if I could help. I don't know. Uh, I have a long list of questions that are awesome. Yeah. Let and me help gonna, you run through them. Uh, yeah. All right. So how do you do with overtime? That's a good one. That's for, that's for work. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that it, at ILM, sometimes you have overtime. Yes. Is it normally okay to refuse? That's a good question. I'm going to say yes, because that's what I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's extremely subjective. Like, you know, I know like where you work. This could be something where, and I hope, hopefully it's not like that, but you refuse and then that reflects negatively on you. Your review is negative and then you won't get, you know, picked up for the next show. I don't know if that happens. I'm sure it does somewhere, which is not right. But let's put it this way. When I was younger, a long time ago, I would do overtime and work hard and, you know, you want to prove yourself. I wouldn't work for free because that's a long, long topic. Don't work for free. I understand why you would, but uh, anyway, I wouldn't do that. But I definitely did like, mm, you want to work. Now, when the question comes up, hey, can you do overtime? I call my wife, like, hey, do, do you have any plans that I forgot, but usually I forget things. And you know, there are any, any uh, obligations or functions or things we have. Or if I'm tired and I wanna do something, I just wanna come home and snuggle with my wife, I'm just gonna say no. And so far I haven't been laid off yet. So, but I've gotten very, very strict in terms of, no, I'm not doing this. Even if you need me, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this. But a lot of times, you know, if you work on Star Wars or Star Trek or a Quiet Place, like I'm spoiled. Like I like it. Like I like the work. So if someone says, "Hey, do you wanna, do you wanna work on some more X wings and make more money?" Ah, yes, of course, I'm gonna do that. I check with family. Of course, does it work? Does it work with me physically? As I'm whacking myself here, uh, you know, I don't want to burn out. But if it works, yes, I'll I'll do it. Grüezi. Oh, Swiss German. We have a Swiss German. Grüezi. Hallo, wie geht's? Uh, Tristan. Weißt du, was das ist? Schweizerdeutsch. Oh, gut, grüezi, grüezi. How do you use Maya with a tablet and pen? Well, I don't know. Hold it and then... <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. Uh, however you use a pen. That's an interesting question. Um, Are there any specific tips uh, around using a tablet and pen versus a mouse, maybe? You find it easier to work with a tablet and pen. I like this because of the ergonomics of, of resting my arm like this versus a mouse with that. And then mm -hmm. sometimes you crook it and then the, the, the squeezing. So how do you work with it? I mean, I manipulate things the way you do with it, with a pen and tablet. Um, maybe I don't set my sensitivity super high so that my mouse doesn't shake. Maybe that will be a tip. How to organize your time and freelance with multiple companies. I don't know. I don't freelance. I'm not allowed to. I'm exclusive to ILM. That's part of the contract. Um, so I can't answer that. I'm sorry. Oh, 
Yeah. How supportive? Mm -hmm. It is a good question. Um, how supportive is your family of how much you are working in the animation field? You do a lot to support the community. I have the best wife in the world. Boom. And I'm not saying on this because I'm on the record. <laughs> on the record because I'm married and she's back there with the whip or something. You got to tell them. She is fantastic. Let me tell you something about my wife. Besides being awesome, fantastic, extremely patient, uh, and makes such yummy food and my belly grows. I kind of don't like her for that, but she bakes too. Her cookies Oh, so good. But anyway, she has absorbed my nerdy obsession with animation and movies that when I do animation and not work because it's like I'm not allowed to, but it's just about home, uh, my private stuff, I, uh, my personal stuff. She comes in and she looks at it and goes, I remember a long time ago, she said, hey, you need one more frame there. I'm not kidding. She gave me a critique over one frame. It was oh a character falling and it was better. It was better. That's She's so pro. good. That's a pro so good. move. I met her at the Academy of Arvo students there and uh, I've been, I met her in 2002. So 18 years. Yes, math. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares about math? Um, so yes, she's awesome and she's very supportive. And usually what we do is, it's just communication. Just like with overtime is that if something happens, I can't just go, yeah, let's work. I want to make money. Or just work at Star Wars. It's just, does that work with the kids and the wife and the obligations, the, the schedule? And as we just talk. And if she, because I don't want her to go like, okay, go work. Like if she says, no, like we need to do this, we need to do that. And, and I want to do this as well, then I'm going to say no. And we just have a discussion. So to me, it's communication is really, really key. But she is extremely patient. Very, very patient. She also likes movies, which is a massive plus. So I'm very spoiled in that aspect. Shout out to JD's wife. Shout out indeed. <laughs> I am from Quebec. Alors bonjour, Jean-Denis. Where did you start your journey to end up at ILM San Francisco? Yeah, the beginning. Um, where was the beginning for you? That is true. Maybe I should have started with that. <laughs> uh, I am, uh, I was born in Switzerland in the German part of Switzerland, which is Lucerne, which is kind of like an hour away from Zurich. So that's where I started and always watched movies because my dad watched movies he collected movies my very first memory was me it's super weird but i wake up in the crib it's like the jail like back to the future you're like hey are you in that jail and i look to the right and there's this wall which is probably this big but in my memories this big wall full of vhs tapes and two munchy cheese if anybody remembers munchy cheese little monkeys you can take the thumb and stick it into their mouth i don't know uh oh someone goes heck yeah ariel shout out to ariel uh that's all i remember it was the brown one and the gray one and so as I grew up, my dad watched a ton of movies, like classics of, you know, back then it was old. So Hitchcock stuff, but also documentaries, old Westerns, newer movies. He was the one that brought in Star Wars when I was seven-ish or something, which blew my mind and changed my world. Um, that, and he, he's a retired doctor now, but he plays um, tenor saxophone. I think I get that right. He would kill me right now. You know, he wouldn't, uh, but he plays music. So the household was always music, jazz, always jazz, jazz and uh, movies. So I think that has helped me tremendously in terms of, A, just being obsessed with movies and loving them, but also rhythm, I guess. It's just very musically, like, for me, animation, everything has to have rhythm. It's like a melody in your animation. And I, I'm a big fan of the ups and downs and contrasty things. And, and I think that is thanks to my dad, for sure. And my mom can draw like no other and paint. It's insane. Um, so I, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I love drawing. I love the feeling of a pencil and, and drawing on paper. And back in school when I did 2d animation for a class, it was so great, but it was very clear that I never will be a, like a, a nine old man, Disney draftsman. But you're, so, you're working at ILM as a 3d animator. So, well, that's why 3d is great. Cause that can be off model. Like, you know, the model stays mm -hmm. somewhat there. Like I don't have to worry about being off model. Mm -hmm. Um, so Toy Story saved my life. So basically the journey was Switzerland, movies, watching tons of movies. I have no idea what I want to do. Toy Story comes out. I was probably, I don't know, 16, something, I don't know, high school. But it was, oh, you can do this on a computer. I don't have to draw. Awesome. Then I did, still didn't know until I was maybe 20, 21, something like that, and decided to do special effects because of you know, Star Wars, you know, Back to the Future, and lightning, and tornadoes, and things. Came to San Francisco Academy of Art, and then I've told this story, story so many times. Sorry if you're bored, if you heard this before. Um, I took a class. I, for, I took a class for maybe 20 minutes. It was math and physics or something, because it was all about special effects, and it was all coding and things. 
and um, not coding, but just kind of the scripting aspect of it. And I just, I did, I wanted to do stuff by hand and I immediately changed my major to animation. And back then the academy did more like, uh, there was an improv class, animation history class, but it didn't really animate till the very end. My very first real animation class with actual teaching, because I did Maya 1 and 2, that was just software, and I animated on your own, but not someone that teaches you the principles of animation. My very first class was in fall 2002, and I graduated in spring 2003. <laughs> so I was very lucky to like it and to not be horrible at it. Um, and that is my that is my journey in a small nutshell. When you graduated, did you apply for a job at ILM right away? Did that come later? Did you have to practice a lot first? I, I'm old, so my reel was on tapes, VHS tapes. So I you had to this. print out labels, very expensive, you know, top and on the side, the sleeve, blah, 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 get the paper. Um, I did a sell pre-stamped post postcard. So if you send it to a company that they would send it back to me, which out of 60, I think three did. Shout out to Tippett. Thank you. They did. Um, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. I sent out 50, 60 reels. Nothing happened. The only two things that I had was uh, a job interview at ESC for the Matrix 2. And uh, the Academy said that Tippett wanted me for Starship Troopers 2 or whoever did. I don't know if it was Tippett. I know they did, but maybe a side company that did something. Anyway. But none of that worked because I was too stupid in terms of the scheduling of my OPT, the optional practical training to, for a work visa. So I graduated for three months. I wasn't allowed to work. So those two things came during that time and I was just being too stupid. Then those opportunities went away. Then I, again, had nothing. Did some animation at home. Went back to the academy for one more semester in fall. And then in Christmas time, set up my reel again and to answer your question, that then, because the reel was better, it wasn't as horrible anymore, and I got me a Tippet interview, Factor 5, shout out to Factor 5, they don't exist anymore, a fantastic company, and Sony, and I, had a, and I went to Sony for the actual interview in LA, and it was a rumor that ILM also looked at my reel. Shout out to Sean Kelly, who uh, was teaching way back at the academy, and I showed him my reel, and I believe he gave my reel to someone, and that sealed the deal, so... Massive thank you. Whenever I can publicly thank Sean Kelly, uh, I wouldn't be where I am without him. So came back from the interview Friday uh, at, at Sony, back to Monday, interview at ILM, and got in there through uh, an internship, the last internship they had at ILM. It's a long answer. Wow. No, that was a great answer. <laughs> I love that. It's like so full of like winding twists and turns, and here you are. You know, one thing I can tell to all of you, if, you're, if you are interested in animation, because I don't know who else joined and if there are other interests, but it's really, as Etna Mode said in, in The Incredibles, because it's, I love that movie. That first one is so good. Luck favors the prepared. And there's so much in that, in that saying where you have to work really, 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 really hard. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You just got to be able to get in there frame by frame. Your question, your action, acting choices and polish your work. That's your hard work has to be there. But it's also so dependent on luck where you can send in your reel, the company's not looking for you, you know, or you're too expensive or you're a foreigner and then the work visa doesn't quite work out. There's so many factors out of your control and then you won't get hired. So just be ready, work hard, put your reel out there, like I said before, especially now, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, just be visible. It's like, hey, I'm here, I'm awesome. Just take me and hire me, mm -hmm. uh, but just be ready for that. But don't just send your reel and then just sit back and do nothing for a year. I think the moment your reel is sent, start another one, right? Completely revamp and, re and replace all your shots and do something better and practice and then send it out again. Yeah. That's great. I love that advice. We have about eight minutes left. So I was wondering if I could rapid fire read you some questions and see yes. how many we can get through because we have a lot. Yes. Um, what has been your hardest animation where you felt very challenged? I know there are so many things to choose from, but first one that comes to your head. Oh my God, the hardest one. Maybe most recent, most recent difficult piece of animation. Oh, I'm currently working on Space Jam 2. Woo. Shout out to Space Jam 2, don't fire me, but it's on the ILM website, so I can, I can say we're working on it. Because um, I worked on Star Wars a ton. I did some stuff in between like Quiet Place and, and, and a little bit of a land and stuff like that, but it's mostly been hard surface stuff, uh, spaceships and camera work, animating cameras and, and uh, ships. And now it's more on the cartoonier side of, as you know, Space Jam. Um, and I was <laughs> very nervous. I do teach cartoony. I've been teaching for 13 years. 
but actively doing it every day, that's a whole different ballpark. So I was slightly nervous about going from so long, super photoreal, hard surface stuff to cartoony. And it's working out and I have such a blast. I've never had so much fun ever at work, dare I say. Um, and I love working on Star Wars. I love working on Star Trek. I like all those, those, Rango was great. Like, you know, all those franchises and movies are great, but there's something about what I'm doing right now is so cool, so much fun. Uh, I don't know. So it's, it's very frightening and the hardest thing with a, a relief that it's, it's uh, working out. That's great. I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> I'm 36, halfway uh, through AM, working in 3D as a generalist for eight years. Do you think I have the chance to make a nice career as an animator starting so late? I get that question a lot. Um, that's a tough one. I want to say yes, just because why not? At the same time, it really depends on your environment and if you have a family and obligations. So if you're 36 and you're healthy and you can be at the company and do overtime and you like just be valuable, quote unquote, even, you know, don't kill yourself doing overtime but there's that and then there's you're 36 and you have wife and kids you know homework school you just can't always be there for the company and it's also a mental workload to have that so can you do it yes but what what's the toll it's going to take on you and can you do it you mean like mentally and schedule wise um 36 and single no kids Go for it. <laughs> uh, but again, like it's, it's such a subjective thing. I mean, if you are changing and you can learn fast, like if you're awesome, right, why would they not hire you? I heard, this is totally a rumor, that someone a long time ago, Golem maybe, it's a French animator at Pixar, someone verified this. I thought he started there fairly late, being old, and he, he's fantastic. His shots are incredible. They're fantastic. So I say yes, 46 and kids. You know, it depends on your kids, the teenagers. I went through it one that's a teenager. You can see my gray hair. It ages you fast. Shout out to, to parents with teenagers. Holy moly. <laughs> um, but I say, you know what? It's, it's your dream. Go for it. Like, why not? Like 46, chances are you're going to be 80, 90. Like you might even have like another 35, 40 years ahead of you. Like, why not? This could be halfway through and you're, you're doing this now and it's your passion, which means you have more energy. And you're gonna be more successful in it and more fulfilled. Like, who am I to say no? I would say go. Don't listen to me anyway. I guess let's, let's forget everything I said. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. That's that's JD's advice. Go go for it. Um, how did you decide which part of animation you wanted? To, oh, no, no, I'm listening to you, but I'm also I I, I peeked at another question. Lark. The water I'm bottle. Do, that was I'm water doing bottle double question. duty. This is for you. Um, how did you decide which part of animation you wanted to go into? Modeling, animation, texturing, rigging. And I would add on a question. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about this. Um, if you weren't an animator, what other part of film would you want to be involved with? Sound design. Bam! No hesitation. I love sound design and sound editing, the mixing, the creation of sounds. Any, any type of making of, of Star Wars, you know, with the lightsabers, old, old vintage making of are so good. Back in the day, Pixar on, on DVDs, shout out to people who still use DVDs. A lot of shout outs today. Uh, they used to have a separate track for sound effects until I think Finding a Nemo. Either Finding a Nemo is the last one or the one before. And I, there I said, I'm a nerd and I listen to just the sound effects track only. And I love it. I, it's so cool. And I would absolutely do that. Um, so, yes. That's and awesome. uh, by the way, that waddle, a water bottle, YouTube channel, shout out to my own channel. <laughs> uh, it's on there. It's on there. I have a review and a kind of a walkthrough of, of, that, of that bottle. Um, hey. That's my profession. I author DVDs at my company. All right. Sorry, sorry. I saw a no, chat. No. There's so many things I want to answer. You guys are so awesome. Why don't you pick two and see how quickly we can go through Oh, that. two. Okay, hold on. Um, Tell you what. Mm, 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 mm. You can pick, pick three. I just three. Thought, let's yeah. do it. Yep, let's do it. <sighs> okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to go up just because people have been waiting. Is there something that you think that is bad or good when showing your work online? Yes. Like using hashtags? No. Participating in challenges? No. Challenges are great. Hashtags, listen, you might hate the whole like hashtag, like, subscribe thing. It's there for a reason. It's there for exposure and, and traction. So put your animation out there, put hashtag animation on there. And if someone searches that, you'll be seen. Like, just don't worry about what people say about that. Do, totally do that. What do you say to stay sharp with animation when not working? Uh, I can't turn my brain off. This is part two, by the way. To stay motivated in the idea creation, that's going to be there. So let's not use that as an answer. You got two more. 
Yeah, I'm going to say again. Join, <laughs> join, us, join us next Friday for part two of this when yes. Katie talks about motivation. Part two. And then you'll be no limits. It's going to be a five hour Q and A. It's not true. <laughs> what do you suggest for shooting reference when you have a small living space? Ooh, that's, that's a, a good question. question. That sucks. You stump me. I mean, there's only so much you can do. So do as much as you can in terms of close-up and detail acting. You mean fingers and facial stuff. Clearly, you can't bounce around and run around. Then you have to go online and check whatever, BBC, Motion Gallery, YouTube, like whatever you could find. Or, hold on. Can I go as far? Hold on. Hold on. Ah! Ah, I'm almost back. <laughs> he's, don't worry. He's oh, coming back. Don't worry. That is Here a crazy, crazy thing. Here he hold on. Hold on. I got my... Holding headphones. Oh, nice. Okay. Rhino House. These are fantastic. They are so, so nerdy. Please, anybody, use these. You got frame by frame. You got with the grid view. You can frame through. You have behavior stuff, locomotion for humans and creatures. Shout out to Rhino House. Um, then I'm not sponsored, but you want to sponsor <laughs> me. Uh, I would recommend that. So any type of thing that you can't do in your room, it's a really great question. You have to find um, that or ask your friend to go outside of your house or apartment, act it out, you film it, <laughs> social distancing, of course, be safe, and then use that as reference. So you are the director. It's going to be easier for you to direct the, the reference than uh, acting it out yourself. There you go. Wait, there's one more. There's one more. Yep. Did you ever work with not very nice people? How do you deal with them? Ignore them. I have to say, um, I think like 99% they've been awesome. I've been extremely, extremely lucky. There I say sometimes um, in all kinds of fields. What I would say is just don't, don't engage. Don't go crazy with them. Um, just because this industry is so small. This is my, like, my wrap up. This industry is so small. You will meet. I just got a DM from, shout out to, uh, to Mr. Shori, uh, DreamWorks, who said he just talked to someone, a coworker who was in my class, that Maya 3 class in fall 2002, he was in that class. So this industry is so small. Things just come around and it's just, you got to be very careful about your reputation, your invisible resume. And if you piss someone off and even though it's not your fault, they might have something against you later on and then it will stunt your, your growth or your job opportunities. Just be very careful. I would say this industry is very small. Just be nice. Be kind. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not like we, we're curing cancer. Or we are the front line right now. You mean that like for coronavirus where we're dying? Not we, but you know, it's just, we're spoiled. We're working on movies. My homework is watching movies. It's a ridiculous job. It's like the one percenter of jobs. So to be then in that field and to be a jerk and to be arrogant and have an attitude like, ooh, I'm the best and all that stuff, man, just, I hate that stuff. Just get out of here. Like, just don't do that. This is, there's, life is too precious. <laughs> so just I, ignore it. I move on. Great. Be nice. I have to say too, like all of the animators, genuinely all of the animators that I have met in person at this point have been kind. So I think you're not the only yes. one who feels that way. Everyone Shout so out excited. to Animation Mentor. Sorry. Well, animation so, Mentor and, and animators and their passion for it, for the industry. You know, so many people yeah. are excited about getting to animate every day or getting to work on these amazing, you know, games, TV shows, movies that it just carries forward into, into the work they do and how they present. So themselves. cool. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm so sorry. I know you would answer all of them and they would keep coming. We could be here for six hours, but I know you have, so, you have a dog to walk. <laughs> and how, about, how can I offer something? Yes. How about this? All of you who I have not answered, just go on my YouTube channel, <laughs> pick any movie, anything I upload it, just put a comment there and put that question there. Uh, there because I, I'll get notified and I'll just answer it. So sorry that I couldn't get to you. I would love to do this for five hours. Uh, that will be discussion with my wife, obviously. Um, but they, I mean, I'm glancing. They seem to be really, really cool. So just absolutely go on my channel, post a question there, and I will answer all of your questions. I promise. And uh, where, so YouTube, where else can people get a hold of you or, or see some of your great work? Besides, of course, attending a class at animation. You can't see any of my great work. Uh, a, because it's potentially not that great. Um, but it's also because of legal reasons. And I, I don't have my real online just because of ILM. We can't. Uh, some people do. I just, I, that's when I'm a company man. As much as I say, eh, I go home, I don't do overtime. I'm also, these are the rules. I'm not breaking those rules. I don't want to get fired. So, but you can go and I can type this in here. This is on my website, jeandenis.net. I have all my schoolwork on there. So if you want to see really horrible work, <laughs> go there. 
Um, or maybe inspiring because that's where you started. Yeah. If someone like me made it with that horrible type of animation, anybody can make it. So if you're 46, come on, you can, you can do it. Uh, and that site has the links to uh, my blog. Uh, again, YouTube, just type in my name in YouTube. I'm on Twitter, definitely on Twitter because I retweet a ton of stuff. So you've got more educational stuff. Um, I'm on Instagram, but I do really not much there in terms of my, per it's like my personal outlet, personal photos, uh, except the stories. So there I post things that I do or any announcements. Uh, I do have a Spongella Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, I don't connect on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm posting there as well. And if you want to learn animation, animation mentor is awesome. I know it sounds very, you know, biased and subjective, but it is really awesome. The community is fantastic. CTN each year is great. The, the AM meetings, like the community is really, really great at mentor. So. If you want to learn something and you want to be in a, in, a, in a supportive environment with a big variety of mentors, AM is your deal. So, and then say hi. I'm there, obviously, uh, and go from there. Thanks so much for joining. We will see you next time. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Post your questions. I'll get to them. Thank you. Thank you.